Hi, this is Leslie Ann from LA's cricket.blogspot.com. Today I'm going to show you how to use a free uh, photo editing software uh, called GIMP to retouch a old photo. And uh, this is the photo I did. It appears dark on my blog, but in person it's beautiful. Um, and it went from the original with extensive damage and some crazy um, layout, I guess, uh, of the photographers and some dust and scratches to quite a nice finished and modified product, I think. And uh, all using a free program called GIMP. It's available from uh, GIMP.org for download. And uh, it is quite powerful and a uh, good alternative to Photoshop. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up GIMP. And it is running my background, I think. There she is. And we're going to grab that original photo. And a couple of things to start out with. You can zoom in on your photo with the zoom button on the bottom left. And you can also use the keyboard shortcuts of the minus sign to zoom out, the plus sign to zoom in. And that's very handy when you're doing uh, photo editing like this. You'll see right off there's a lot of scratching, a lot of dust, a lot of damage in this photo. Uh, some of it is from um, the scan, but most of it really is from um, years of abuse. I uh, found it in a box, but I do know that it at one point lived in one of those horrible magnetic uh, photo albums. I'm not sure where this damage came from, but actually quite an easy fix. So the first thing you're going to need to use is the clone tool. And on GIMP it looks like a little stamp. And we're going to use that all over the place. So I'm going to click on it and zoom in a little bit on my photo with my plus. Oh, with my plus. There we go. And I'm going to remove uh, this crazy line first of all. Now my brush is a bit big, so I'm going to pull it on down to about a one. And I'm going to try just the circle first. Now I need to select an area to clone from, the original area. So I'm going to find a clean area and hold down my control key and click. The cursor changed and will be left behind when you move away. And that's my sample area and this will be uh, my clone area that I'm moving around. So I'm going to click down on my mouse and just drag it along that wire. And that's actually really not bad, but still fairly noticeable. So I'm going to edit, undo that and try again using the fuzzy circle. I generally prefer to use the fuzzy circle in most areas because it will blend the edges together quite nicely. So I'm happy with the sample area, but I'm going to go back and try again. And as you see, my sample area moves along with me, so you do want to pick a clean area. Uh, when I release my, my uh, mouse and I unclick, it will go back to the original. I'm going to do some blending, but I'm actually quite happy with that already. If I zoom out, you'll see it's really not at all noticeable anymore. So I'm going to do the same thing over here in this corner area. And I'm going to sample a new area by holding Control, click, and you'll see the sample area changes. But I'm going to increase the size of my brush because this is a large area to cover. And I'm just going to sweep up and down. And if you don't like it, you can always undo. And there is a bit of trial and error with this kind of technique to see what looks good. So I'm going to zoom out now. I'm actually really quite happy with that. I'm going to switch over to the other side. Change to new sample area. Click. And I'm going to change the brush again here and move over to a calligraphy brush and that will enable me to get into kind of tighter spots. It does leave a hard edge though so you may want to go back and soften those edges um, if applicable with um, the fuzzy circle. So let's zoom out and see. Oh much better. There seems to be a little bit of a oops a little bit of a shadow there so I'm going to go back to my fuzzy circle 
and I'll just give that a little bit more blending time. Okay, I'm going to use the same technique at the bottom to fix this repair area on the teddy bear. And um, it's harder to find a clean area to sample from, but uh, it's this is this texture is actually going to be quite uh, easy to fix. And you can always go over the same area multiple times and just do what looks good to you. Uh, I don't think there's any real right or wrong to this, so if it looks good, go for it. Now every so often you should zoom out and take a look at it, see how it looks from a distance, and then zoom back in and do any more corrections. Now you can change the opacity or, um, of this brush and move it down and that can help you do some more blending. Down here is some of the carpet and it was a little bit trickier to fix. Um, so I did um, a smaller brush and just used my best guess. Okay, our final step is going to go back and uh, clean up that carpet area. Last thing I'm going to do is get rid of some of these um, really bad scrapes and scratches. They're especially noticeable up here at the top. And I'm not going to clone to get rid of that. I don't have any, any clean spots. I'm going to use a filter on this one. Uh, so under Filter, Enhance, Despeckle. That will take out a lot of the little dots, the dust marks, the scrapes, uh, as if by magic, actually. I don't usually change a lot of this. You can play around with it. Um, you want to be careful that you don't change too much because you can um, soften the edges, especially of faces, with this tool. But go ahead and click on OK, and you'll see almost all of the noise is now gone. Um, any really bad spots, I would go back and just clone them out. I might clone out some of these scratches and any of the really noticeable white bits. I might go back and do a bit of cloning to get rid of those. But it does take care of most of the trouble quite quickly and easily. And when you're cloning, you do want to be pretty close so that you're areas blend nicely. Okay, last thing to do is to fix up the color on my photo and um, I can manipulate this photo with the color tools up here um, but I can also just do an autocorrect. Um, I've used different programs for autocorrecting and sometimes I'll use GIMP, uh, other times I'll use Picasa and I'm going to uh, adjust the contrast first and already I've got some improvement and I'm going to auto correct the white balance as well. And let's take a look. So a few little touch up areas I think I could work on still but uh, overall a much nicer finished product than the original and now I can save and reprint. Uh, the original of this photo was a 4x6 and I scanned it as uh, at 300 dpi, 300 dots per inch. Um, I can reprint this as a 4x6, at best maybe a 5x7, but um, really hard to enlarge photos from their original to scan. But uh, I'm quite happy with this, and uh, I'll take a look at the side by side comparison as well, and you'll see it's a much nicer finished product. So I hope that encourages you to try out GIMP. It's a great little program. Thanks for visiting.